For this project, I actually used four colors, even though I only have three listed here. I used permanent black, titanium white, quinacridone red, and cadmium yellow. I've got my paper palette as well, a jug of clean water, and a couple of round brushes of different sizes and a couple of filberts. But you can use whatever brushes you're comfortable with. So we're gonna start out by putting our drawing down with a white charcoal pencil on this canvas that I painted in black acrylic paint. Once I put my drawing in pretty loosely, I go back in with a wet paper towel to remove any extra lines that I don't want in my final drawing. That's the great thing about charcoal, it wipes off really easily. So next I just hop right in with the acrylic paint. I make a mixture of white and black and sometimes a little touch of red to make um, a gray color. And that's how I pretty much lay the outline of the glass. Honestly, you don't have to be really, really picky with your outline because even if you screw up and make um, a little bit of the, let's say the white on the right side of the glass is too thick. You can go back in as soon as it dries, which is really quickly, and go back in with some black paint and touch it up. This is what is so great and so easy about this painting, is how easy it is to touch up your mistakes. So basically what I do for this type of piece is make the entire glass outline in kind of a mid-tone gray. I know it looks pretty light in the video, but it's actually a mid-tone gray color and I let that dry and then I wipe off the excess chalk off of the, the uh, or charcoal off the uh, canvas. And then I go back in and closely looking at my reference photo, I will put in the lights and the, um, some more of the mid-tones and some darks just um, by carefully observing what I see in my reference photo. There are some red reflections and some white reflections, a little bit of pinks. Um, there's also some areas where you can't actually see the glass. It's, it's in shadow. So I have to go back in over that gray line that I initially made and paint black over it in little areas. So the important thing is that you really study your reference photo and try to mimic what you see. And here I am refining some of those lines again with the black acrylic. It's just a constant back and forth process, but it actually is a lot of fun. Next I take the pure quinacridone red and start laying in my red colors just like I see them in my reference photo. I'm not too worried about the darks right now because I'm going to go back in later with some red mixed with black in order to make those deep red shadows. And honestly, I'm not too worried about getting every single splash, every single droplet, every single shadow exactly like I see in my photo. And that goes for the entire glass as well. Um, what I'm trying to convey is a mood and a certain amount of movement and darkness in the glass of wine. So I'm not really picky at all about um, where I'm placing the color at this point. I'm just going for this feeling. And the whole point is to have fun with it. And this is Jax. I just had to put him in because he is always with me when I paint. He's my little art critic. And today he's not actually trying to steal my paintbrush. So here I'm just doing some more refining and adding some more details. I go in with red and then I go in with black while the red is still wet and try to mix kind of a deeper, darker red color. And then to make the brightest reds in the wine glass, I actually mix in some yellow with my red just to make it a little bit brighter. 
Um, a lot of people will automatically jump to white to lighten their red, but as you know, white and red make pink, and I really don't want pink wine. I want red wine. Okay, so now for the really fun part, which has nothing to do with my reference photo. It's just something I wanted to do, which was to add some splashes of paint all around my glass. Um, what I did was I took some red paint on my palette and just put in a lot of water so that it's really watery. And then just took a regular paintbrush and flicked the paint onto the canvas. You can also use a toothbrush. Um, you can get really creative and try different size brushes, whatever makes you happy. I did that all along the front of the canvas and on all the edges too for a really cool little splatter effect. <laughs> 